Yo, see what up, man? What up? Yo, you can't keep the L. Cause I play strictly for the W, that's how champs do. No emotion like a wild when I'm broke. No I stay ready, train to go, cause I'm a pro. It's no off season. I'm LeBron like on the mic, MJ static. I can hear too. It's about the opposition, all I know is hit him. I'm so disrespectful. There's nothing you can do about it. My dominance race supreme like peace on top of everything. I bring the noise, thus put you a pause. I punish the strong as well as the weak. I'm by Mike MC, I'm up the elite. And I roll with a championship circle. You don't believe me? Ask yourself. Sit down, let's talk about it with my man Cordell Bow. Yeah, I slap it up for him. Welcome to another episode of Championship Circle. Uh, I'm back with you, your host, Cordell Bowser. And today I got a special guest with me. Uh, go on, introduce yourself. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Kentuan Balmer, uh, original welding charger. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Tar, Tar Hill, uh, former NFL player, uh, Sanford University coach. I'm here. You know, thank you for having me. Oh, yeah, man. You know I had to bring you on, man. Fellow Charger, man. I got to show respect. Got to show respect. I definitely appreciate it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, we had uh, enough former Charger on the show. Uh, Brian Hopkins. You know, he played uh, linebacker. Right, so, right. Let me just ask you, do you remember one of your best games in high school? Um. Now, football or basketball? You know, I was a two-sport yeah, guy. Yeah, you so. were a two-sport. I think you was kind of a beast in both of them. Well, um, let, 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 let's go football first. Uh, My best game, football. Man, that's tough, man. I had a lot of good ones. Yeah, um, yeah you did. I think the best one I probably had was my senior year against Ronald Rapids. Um, you know, in my four years that we had never beaten Ronald Graphics. Yeah, never. And, um, you know, so we made it a point. Myself, um, A.J. Mills, Andre Turner, Kendrick Mills, uh, Amp Falcon, man, we got together. And, you know, Coach Grady, of course, was on us, man, like he always is. But we made it a point amongst ourselves, like, yo, we, we, this ends today, you know. So we went there. Um, and I told right before, you know, the kickoff, because I was an end, and then Eric Price was an end, we said, yo, they don't get nothing. They don't get nothing, you know. And we went out there, man. And I think I had, uh, I think I had three sacks that game. I think Eric had uh, two sacks. Um, AJ was all over the field from his linebacker spot. Um, you know, Andre Turner was pushing the middle. It was just a great collective effort. Uh, we ended up beating them six to zero. I think I blocked the field goal that night too. And um, you know, that was very special, you know, in my heart because. You know, that was the first time that we had beat them, you know, in my four years there. And, you know, it just, you know, it was just a collective effort by, you know, a, a great group, group of guys. And, you know, we pulled out a, a, a victory. No one thought that we could. So that's probably the best game I had when I was in charge. And I'm going to say, man, shout out to Grady, man. Like, if nobody know Grady, man, explain how it was playing for Grady. <laughs> Um, playing for Coach Grady, man, uh, it, he's going to be rough on you now. I'm, I'm going to say that. He's going he gonna, to he gonna be himself. He gonna, you know, he's going to talk to you type, you know, any type of way. But he's also going to push you, you know, when things get thick, he's somebody you can count on. You know, um, um, I enjoy my time playing for him because when I went to college, you know, um, I was prepared. You know, um, the mental aspect. That, and that's one thing about, you know, being from where we're from, man. Like, the kids are going to be mentally tough. They're going to be oh, physically yeah. tough. You know, so so when you so when I went to college, I was already prepared. And my first coach I had, he was a lot like Coach Grady. He was, he was just white, but he was just like Coach Grady. He was always riding me. You know, he was cussing at me. You know, he was forcing me. To get, yeah, he was forcing me to get better. You know, and 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 a lot of guys can handle that, but you know, and it was tough. It was frustrating, of course, from a player standpoint. But I um I respected it. You know, and I got better. And you know, but I was used to that. You know, being under Coach Grady. Um, you know, I was already kind of used to that type of tough love. Like, you know, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna push you to the to the best that you can be, or you or you gonna fold. 
you know. So I always appreciate the time, man. You know, shout out to Coach Grady, man. He's done a lot for a lot of kids. Yeah, he have, man. He have. Okay. We say you a two-sport player, right? Right. Your, your best game as a basketball player at Weldon High School. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> and, look, and, and, I, and I know, I think I remember – Morel, remember Morel Hines? Shout out yep. to Morel, man. Of course, I, great I, guy, great man, point, yeah. I remember home game. I want to say it was against Northwest. First time he threw it off the backboard, and you called it. Yep that that's probably that's probably the game. And um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, shout out to Morel, Josh Bernardo, oh, Jason yeah. Scott. Um, and that was that was my sophomore year. We were playing um, Northampton West. And shout out to all the guys at Northampton West: uh, James Jeffries, Deshaun Peel, you know, Jay Tillery. Um, and, you know, man, uh, my sophomore year. Uh, oof, because man, ooh, this, this <laughs> memories, man. man, memories, yeah, man. Because you know, uh, my my senior year team, we were loaded too, man. Because uh, me and my brother got a good memory, man. I, well, I got two. I got two. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go with the first one, you know, the one with Morel. And that's special because I was a sophomore. Um, and I remember it was, it was, we were going back and forth to see who was gonna be the leader in the conference. It was between us and Northampton West. Now, they had a great team. Like I said, they had oh, James yeah. Jeffries, they had, man, they had Peel, um, you know, rest in peace, Boo Boo. Yeah. He was up there, man. Um, boy, they had a smoker too, you know. Um, and Ron Yale Squire, he was on that team. And um, I remember, you know, we were going back and forth. I think we had split the season games one and one. Mm-hmm. Um, we beat them at well, and they beat us at West. So, you know, um, we're in a conference tournament. You know, they blowing everybody out. We blowing everybody out. And now, shout out to Coach Hanson because he made a he made a real chess move on this day. So I remember we was going in for practice. You know, it's the day before the you know the uh, conference championship game, and uh, he had came back him and Coach James Lynch. You know, shout out. You know. Uh, Coach Lynch, you know, a.k.a. Saab. Oh, yeah, Saab. Um, can't, can't forget Saab, man. Oh, no, nah, man. Saab, Saab is, you know, he, he's been around for a lot of great things, man. Oh, and, uh, yeah. You know, he's kind of, he's kind of the, uh, you know, the the unsung hero because, you know, Coach Grady get a lot of love. Coach Hanson get a lot of love. And, you know, I think now everybody's kind of starting to sit back and Coach Lynch is starting to kind of get a chance to kind of run with the show. So, you know, that that's been long overdue, in my opinion, and that's no disrespect to Coach Hanson. He he had a great run, oh, um, yeah. but I'm glad he's giving you know Coach Lynch a, a chance because he he's earned that. Um, but kind of jumping back, you know, they came from um, Golden Corral. I think they used to have a conference meeting at Golden Corral, man. And uh, you know, uh, who I think uh, who was coaching West that time? I know uh, I know uh, Mar Rawls is over there. And uh, I can't think uh, of the head coach. I'm looking right at him. I can I can remember his face just playing his day. I just can't remember his name to say my – he's going to be mad at me. Forgive me, coach. <laughs> Forgive me, coach. We'll get uh, back with you. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, yeah, so he came – him and I remember we were out there. We were just kind of shooting around. We were just kind of, you know, just kind of chilling, waiting for them to come in. He came and he sat down. He blew to us. Blew, blew. Everybody on the sidelines. He was like, man – Oh, man, we're going to have to run. Da, 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 da. You know, we kind of, you know, complaining a little bit. So he lined us up. And he went down the line. And uh, it just so happens, me and Morrell and Josh, it was Morrell's. Um, he was on my right. Uh, I was in the middle. Josh was on my left. And um, I think it was Jay Scott that beside Josh. And it just so happens, you know, we were all three in the running for conference player of the year. Um, Cause you know, I think Morel was averaging like seventeen. I was averaging like fifteen. Josh was averaging like nineteen. So we were like all right there together. And just so happens on this day, we were standing right beside each other. And he was like, Morel, you know, they said, you know, he just he just started laying into us, telling us that, you know, oh, man, they said this, they said that. So when they got us three, he really laid it on. He was like, Morel, you know, um, you just did all you do is dribble and cross people up and shoot threes, and you ain't got nothing to play. Like yeah, so he was just telling us everything everybody was saying. He was like, Kent Twan, you just big and you know, you can't you can't do this and you can't do that. And Josh, you don't play no defense. You just <laughs> all you do is shoot and showboat and blah 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 blah. So the rest of practice was just quiet. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just stewing. Everybody just stewing. So I remember um we walking to the gym on that particular Friday night. Um it's packed, it's jam-packed. We don't, usually we all sit together. He called us to the back. He bring out these warm up suits we was gonna get for the playoffs. So we he put us on them. So we already turned up, yeah. you know. Um, 
And so the gym is hot, man. The gym is like smoking. We probably got about 3,000 people packed in the Charger house, man. And I'll never forget, he cut the, this is the one time, you know, he like it hot in there. He like the runners, the definite. You know how he is. Oh, yeah, Coach um, K style. Man, he used to, boy, he used to be like an oven in there. So, but this particular day, I remember he opened the vents and a breeze came through. You know, I had just got a fresh cut. So, I, I, you know, so that feeling, I just felt like it was, you know, everything was kind of setting up. And then shout out to Mike Peebles, man. I remember he uh, he, he let me use a CD player for that game because I, I usually ask people for nothing, but he brought it for me. And I was listening to that. Uh, you remember that Rock versus D Block CD? Oh, yeah. You already know. Mixtape, oh, yeah. Stop Yard. Oh, yeah. You know it. You know it. So I was listening to that all day, man. So we watching the games. We watching the games. And me and uh, me and Twan, we laugh about this, man. He he still remembers this game very vividly because he said he walked in the gym and saw us sitting together and had no warm-up suits on. He was like, man, he was like, this might be a long night, fella. So we we laugh about that quite often, man. And I, and I just remember we walked out there, you know, want a whole lot of talking from us, you know, and then a fight broke out, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the fight broke out. Everybody looked crazy. We like, nah, we bought this. You know, we kind of got hype off that. And so, um, you know, tip off go, man. And we, we press, we press go from the very first. We press go from the very first beginning of the uh, of the tip off. You know, oh yeah, um, and you know it was we, already lit in the gym, so it was a go. That's right, that's right. And we stayed on. I think we ended up being number thirty, man. And I I remember, um, you know, that, that's the that's the game that uh, Morel threw threw it off the backboard. Um, um, hold on one second. Um, he threw it off the backboard, and man, um, I think Josh had like thirty. Um, and um, yeah, and Morell, uh, Morell, yeah, I remember he, uh, ooh, he almost made somebody fall that day, that game. Yeah. I remember like it was yesterday. He crossed somebody up and went to the lane. And what so happened is we ran this play one time before. We were playing on a dirt court back when I was living in um, on Warner Bridge. He crossed the guy up. He went, and I followed. He threw it off the backboard, and I caught it. Boom. Dumped it, and so in that game, he he ran it. He just gave me a look, and I when I mean, he did, I already knew what it was. He, he went in there and I, yep, he threw that thing off the ball. I caught it. Boom! He was jumping on the crowd. Was going crazy, man. That was that was a very special memory. Very yeah. special memory, man. Yeah, man. I I think shout out to Weldon, man. Like I think we had like one of the livest basketball games ever, and I still think they live now. I'm a um. You ever been back? To a welding game since? Um, I've been to a few. I've been to a few. Um, um, we were playing. Uh, we were playing Kip. I went back to one. Um, Tion Clemens was there. Um, uh, AJ was there. Um, I think Steve was there too. Um, and we all just kind of sat and watched the game. Um, yeah. So that was. I think that was the last one I had been to. Okay, good memories, man. Good memories. Yeah. Okay, you talk oh, 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 about. Okay, oh, 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 let me let me say this real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, my uh, my senior, you know, this is my other favorite man. We were playing Lewisburg at Lewisburg, me and my brother. Um, and um, they were pretty good that year. But we uh, they they decided to press us. I don't know why this particular game they tried to press us like we won't weld it, but they did. And so um. Uh, you know, we broke the press, man, and um, it was AJ in the middle, Charles was on the wing. You know, we used to do the the, the three man weave, figure eight from half court. Yeah, figure drip. eight, figure you eight. Know, it, it went pretty much just like that, you know, except for uh, AJ was in the middle, and Charles was on the right wing, I was on the left wing, and um, you know, Charles got it, he threw it to AJ, you know, and I was gonna go, but the defender left because AJ had broken. He threw it to Charles, he didn't throw it to me, and when he threw it to Charles, Charles just threw it up. You know, and I caught that thing, man. And, and I, I, I bent the rim, you know, at Lewisburg, and uh, that was our that was our senior year. That was the state championship, you know, um, run that we had our senior year. And um, so that that's that was a special memory because you know that was a play between me and my brother. So, and see memories like that, you got to keep, man. Like you got to keep. Sure. So now you transitioning. Now you done graduated. Now you on to big. UNC Chapel Hill. Mm-hmm. How was your life on campus as the big man? Because you was a big man, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I got to UNC, I thought I was a big man until I got there. And there was, there was a lot of other big guys, <laughs> too. Um, you know, 
my time in UNC was, especially early on, was very frustrating, you know, because, um, I mean, though I had a lot of physical tools, you know, mentally, I had a lot to learn, you know, and, you know, coming from where we're from, you know, um, you know, starting varsity all four years, football and basketball, um, you know, I, I expected success early, you know, I expected to play more and, you know, I expected to be one of those guys, even though I was a freshman. Yeah. And see, the thing kids got to realize about college is everybody's the man where they're from. You know, everybody pretty much has the same story. You know, um, you know, you got a four-star guy from Texas who's been, um, you know, starting, you know, four years at his college. You got a guy from Charlotte who's been starting four years at his high school. And then you got another guy from Florida. He's been starting four years. At his. So everybody is the same, you know, um, when you, once you walk out there. So you can't expect to, you know, and then not only, you know, the freshmen that you're with, you got seniors who was, oh, you know, yeah. in that, you know, in that program for four years. And, you know, even though the school is not winning games, like these guys are super talented, man. So, um, you know, so walking in, I kind of placed some unrealistic expectations on myself because I felt like, you know, I should have been having success early because that's what I was used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, my mentor, you know, and a good friend, Laverne Bonham, you know, he was at Winston-Salem State. You know, I called him and, you know, of course, and I and I still call him to this day for advice and different things. Um, you know, he he was like, look, man, just, you know, just be easy, you know, just keep working at it, you know, keep learning and, and it'll happen. So um walking on campus, man, it was it was frustrating. Those first two years, man, it was it was very frustrating because um, you know, I had to learn, you know, a whole new terminology I had never learned before. I had to learn, you know, um, different play styles that I had even never even thought of. You know, I had to learn to get in a, in a left-handed stance, which I had never been asked to do. Um, and then, you know, the vigors of, you know, academics at Carolina was tough, you know. Um, you know, so then not only that, you got, you know, strength and conditioning every day. So just the, the, the acclimation period from, you know, a standard standpoint was different. You know, at Welder, you know, you play football, you go right into basketball, you know, um, you get a little time off, then you go right into AAU basketball, then you right back, you know. Yeah, to, the transition. To, exactly. But in college, you know, it ain't none of that. You know, you you own all year, you know. Um, and so it, it, it was tough. You know, it was tough, man. And um, it was a lot of, you know, three-star, four-star guys who couldn't make it. You know, um, we had a lot of guys transfer from my freshman year and some of my sophomore year, but majority of my freshman year, we had uh, about a third of our class transition out of Carolina. I mean, just from the, the mental aspect. And that's something, like I said, I always appreciate being from Weldon and being a charger that, you know, we always were mentally tough, you know, because they couldn't break me. And, and one of the, one of the uh, ways I got my respect was because after my freshman year, you know, I started kind of playing a little bit more. Um, but we had a conditioning test. We come, we coming off um, summer break, you know, where you in classes in the spring and then you go right into the summer session, but you get like two weeks off. Um, and so, you know, me, I'm coming to Weldon, you know, um, and shout out to Miss Neville because she always took care of me when I came oh, home. Oh, yeah, shout out to Miss Neville. That's right. She, you know, she used to always let me work at the school and just kind of make some extra dollars because, you know, you know, you know how it is, you know, coming from Weldon. We don't have a lot. So no, um, that's survival mode. Me, yeah, exactly. So um, she would let me come home and, you know, work and, you know, I would get some, you know, weight left and do some conditioning in. So when I went back, um, you know, I was still in kind of good shape versus everybody else. So I, I never forget this, man. Um, we're running uh, 300 shuttles. And for those who are not familiar with 300 shuttles is, is you have to run 50 yards six times. Now, it sounds easy, but when you put that clock on, you got to make it in a certain time. Oh, yeah. So, you know, so – they just told us we have a conditioning test coming back. We don't know exactly what it is. So everybody's kind of anxious, you know, whatever, whatever. So I, I was in the second group, you know. So the first group, only two guys made it out the first group. My boy, Holly Taylor, you know, which is uh, my dog. He was in my wedding. Um, you know, he's from Longbird. He made it and a senior made it, you know. So everybody else didn't make it. So now everybody's like, oh, my God, man, you know, this test is so hard. You know what I'm saying? And, they panicking you know, now. Yeah, yeah, everybody kind of building it up for this big, you know, tough test, you know. So I'm like, you know what, man? You know, I told myself while I walked out there, you know, um, we had the one o'clock uh, conditioning test. So, you know, the sun is beating off the turf. It's hot, um, you know. But I told myself while I went out there, you know, I'm not going back to well. You know, like I got, I got too much. I got I to gotta push through this. I don't care what nobody else do out here. I ain't going to be the one to fall off. Yeah, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, so – 
we are, we out there, we running, you know, the first couple, you know, you had, you had to do this four times. You had six trips, four times. And the skill has like a faster time. The linebackers, hey Malachi, close that door, please. Um, you know, the linebackers have a faster time and then the O-line and D-line have half times. So, you know, so we start off, boom, we run it. You know, everybody's good on the first one. All right. <clears throat> so we run the second one. Boom. Now you see guys start to kind of fall off. You know what I'm saying? You see about four or five guys fall off. So it's like, all right. So boom, you run it, you run it, you run it. Now all of a sudden you see guys stop. Like, yo, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and as we're running, guys is just like, he's like, and coach told us, coach Connors, man, you know, I love him to death. He, uh, he was like, yo, if you stop or you can't make the time, go to the other side. <laughs> so we're running, you know what I'm saying? And you see the guys walk off. You see the guys and you see everybody just watching. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's over there watching. You know, so you run, you running. So boom. So we get down to the last, the, the third one. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, it's me and four other guys. We standing there. Everybody tired. We looking at each other. So we running. Boom. We running. Boom. We running. Boom. And so uh, I had fell behind. You know, I had fell behind because I'm tired. You know, I'm struggling. But I remember running and the guys were ahead of me and stuff. And Coach yelled out the time. He was like, 45. And I remember I was just, I, and something just clicked inside me. I said, you know what? They gonna have to scrape me off this field today before mm. I miss this test. Like I done overcame too much than where I'm from, and it, and it's I'm thinking this while I'm running. Yeah, you that's know? that mental attitude you had. A exactly, you know. And I was like, I'm not going home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and I'm not I'm not finna fail those who came before me. And so I started running fast. Boom! Started running fast. So I caught up. I almost ran into a senior. You know, boom. You know, luckily we didn't run into each other. But long story short, I ended up making the time for the third one. And after I made that third one, I knew I was gonna make the fourth one, you know, because there wasn't nothing gonna stop me, you know, nothing. And so by the end of the fourth one, it was only two people standing. It was myself and a guy named Brian Chacos. We were the only two that made it in our group. And Holly Taylor and I think Tommy Richardson were the only two to make it in the early group. And that's how I got my respect in Carolina, you know, because I made a test that 98% of the team couldn't make. And that was your mental your mental toughness, like coming from welding, man, you know, we got a different survival mode than a lot of people. Exactly. Exactly, man. And, you know, one thing I love, you know, about my hometown is, man, you know, we compete, you know, like we, we, we're competitive. By oh, nature, yeah. man. You might, and it's a little different now. Like I said, I don't see, you know, when I come home, I don't see kids at the park, but I remember, man, you can go anywhere. Welding, Garrisburg, one of the rappers, man, somebody bouncing a ball. Oh yeah, you know, and, and, and it was on. You know, that's, that's all uh, we did. Yeah, yeah, man, coming through the projects, man, and and you know, Roscoe were out there bouncing the ball, yeah. man. You know, hey, you already know, like we getting out, man. Hey, twenty one. You know, next thing you know, we got we got you know, four and four. You know, playing in the circle. So, you know, being having that competitive that fire, man. You know, that that's something I can say. You know, that's a welding. You know, welding put that in me. You know, just from all those battles on the on the black top, man, and. You know, those Oklahoma drills and, you know, those bear crawls and all that stuff, man. So I always attribute that, you know, to my to my time it was. So, you know, that's near and dear to my heart. It really is. Shout out to Welder, man. And let's fast forward a little bit. Your senior year in Carolina, you had 59 tackles, three sacks. You had nine for stop losses. You had 24 quarterback pressures. So. That was your senior year. Now we fast forward in 2008. <laughs> 2000, yeah, that, that, that year, it had to hit. 2008, what was your draft reaction when your name was called? Like, you know, that's a dream. Like, that's a dream for any kid to hear their name called on draft day. What was your reaction? Um, It was... It was still surreal, man. Even to this day, it's still surreal, yeah. man. Um, it, it, it was just, it, it, it just, it was, it was a dream come true, man. It was a dream come true. Um, now, you know, I, truth be told, I knew, you know, I was going to go first round. I just didn't know where I was going to go. Yeah. I was, I was hoping to go Chicago, man. That's why I really wanted to go to play with, um, you know, Tommy Harris and Brian Erlacher. Oh, and, yeah. You know, Some Vicks. Briggs. Some Vicks. Yeah. Yeah, so I really want, and it was, and Chicago was a great organization, you know, and um, I, um, you know, 
you know, so I knew, but, you know, I didn't know exactly where I was going to go. You know, you hear whispers. I didn't know I was going to go to San Francisco um, because I didn't even talk to them throughout the draft process, man. But to hear my name called for the San Francisco 49ers was like, you know, it was a dream come true because my dad is a huge Niners fan. Even to Yeah, me too, man. 49er diehard. Okay, yeah, yeah, man. You, you, him. And um, a guy, you know, I coached with, uh, you know, a good buddy of mine, uh, Tober Matthews. He's a great 49ers fan too, man. So, you know, y'all are the only guys I know on the East Coast that are 49ers fan. <laughs> Come but, um, on, man. <laughs> yeah, the only ones I know. Die <laughs> hard, die hard. But now nah, that's good, man. 49ers, you know, is a great organization, man. Uh, you know, unfortunately, my time there was, you know, kind of bittersweet. And I'm yeah. always grateful, you know, and thankful for the 49ers because they gave me a chance to take care of my family. Um, you know, and also take care of my family now, you know, set, you know, set up some stuff, you know, um, long term, you know, for my family to come, you know, but I was able to, you know, buy my mother a house, you know, get my brother some cribs. Um, and I was able to do a lot of things for a lot of people that, you know, that I love and care about and, you know, that I probably wouldn't have been able to do if they didn't give me the opportunity. So, you know, um, when I left, I had a lot of bad things to say about the 49ers because I was hurt because I felt like, my time there, you know, um, and one thing people got to realize about the NFL, you know, is it's 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 a business first. Oh, yeah. It's a business first. So, you know, it don't matter how good you are, you know, talent wise. Um, if there's a guy, if you're making two million dollars and a guy in front of you is making eight million dollars, it don't matter how much better than him that you may be. They're going to play him. <laughs> you know, oh, because yeah. Oh, yeah. they looking at you like an investment. And see, in my time with the 49ers. That I didn't understand the business. You know, I'm from Weldon. You know, I'm a Tar Heel. Like, you know, all I know is is the ball. That's yeah, all I know is it. the ball. You know, so I didn't I didn't want to hear. You know, oh man, you know, we just gonna go with this guy, um, just cause I didn't understand that. You know, and um, that's something I learned kind of later on. And you know, as I got older, you know, I kind of understood the business. Now I had some great vets, and they used to try to tell me, you know, Bray or Franklin, Justin Smith. They used to try to tell me, man, it's like, just be patient, you know, be patient. But I couldn't hear that because, you know, I'm a first round pick and I got standards, man. Like, you know, yeah, I got standards yeah. for myself. And you still like, young. You still young. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. You know, and, um, you know, I, I didn't want to hear it. And I just, you know, my thing was, it's like, look, man, you know, I got these expectations from myself, but I got expectations of, you know, the Tar Heel family. And then I also got, expectations from my welding family. Oh, yeah. You know, so I'm not finna sit here and ride no bench or I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sit here and, and and tell me I'm better than this guy, but you're going to play him anyway, you know. Um, and they did some other things that I'm, I'm not going to speak on that really, really, really kind of yeah. turned me, you know, kind of, you know, kind of still stuck in my spirit to this day. But, you know, as I got older and I matured, you know, it was a great opportunity, great experience because, I learned so much just about business, about people, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, you know, so when I left, you know, I, of course I got traded to the Seahawks. Oh yeah. Um, and I said some, some, some things I kind of regret about the organization because, um, I was upset and I was mad, you know, but the, the 49ers, man, they're a great organization. Um, you know, um, a lot of history and tradition there. And I'm thankful, you know, that I got a chance to be a part of that. So. And, like I said, it's a dream to play in the NFL, man. Um, I think you actually played in a playoff game with Seattle. Yeah, oh, yeah. Seattle. You know, I, that's probably my favorite time in the NFL. That was the best two years I've had, yeah. man, just from a chance to be able to heal, you know, because a lot of people don't know this. Well, I had, I had shoulder surgery, and I had a partial rotator tear in a labor room in my shoulder, you know, um, during my time with the 49ers. Um, you know, so that, like I said, that was a whole nother issue, but either way. So when I got to Seattle, you know, being with coach Carroll, just great energy, you know, and they were very transparent with me, which I can respect. Hey, like, listen, man, you know, you can expect to see, Hey, 20 snaps this game, man. You know, we're doing this because, you know, we know you're coming off a of shoulder surgery, blah, 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 but we still going to play you a lot, but it's just going to be, you know, till you can heal. Yeah. So, uh, my first year up there, like you said, that was my best year, man, because I was, I was re-energized. I was in a great situation. You know, guys that were, you know, coaching staff that was talking to me. Um, and, you know, that was by far my best year um, that I had, you know, during my time in the NFL, man. Um, had, you know, was around some great guys, Lofa Tatupu, uh, Leroy Hill, 
Brandon Meebane. Of course, everybody loves, you know, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah, Marshawn uh, Skittles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then Beast Mode, man. Uh, all those guys, man, took me under because everybody had already understood, like, you know, landing in the wrong situation, you know, in, in the NFL has has led to more, like, early retirements and more, you know, um, short careers than any other thing because, and I tell people this, especially my players when they ask, I was like, you know, when you, in the, you know, low well, you get a chance to make it to the NFL, just try to make sure, like, if you're a free agent, do your research, you know, because everybody wants to be a first-round pick, and, you know, yeah. but you don't have any choice over that. But I tell guys, guys who are free agents, you know, you got the best seat in the house because you can pick and choose your situation. So, um, you know, of course, uh, Nas was drafted, Kareem was drafted, Keon was dra- drafted. So these guys have no choice. But I know, you know, some of my teammates that are actually still playing now that were free agents. You know why? Because they looked on the roster and said, you know what? They only got 3D linemen, you know, mm-hmm. making $2 million. They go in right there and start playing, you know, four years. They re-up, get a mega contract. And now they're playing 15 years, you know, versus, you know, versus five years or six years or whatever. So, it's you know, the NFL is a complex business. And all those guys in Seattle understood that, you know, so they embraced me with open arms and, they really helped me, you know, mold and allow me to be myself. And, um, you know, because they had been through a lot as well. Um, so it was it was a match made in heaven. Um, got a chance to really ball, get up out and see the, you know, the the Northwestern, you know, the snow, the, you know, the rain. Atmosphere. It, it, was, it was great, man. I <laughs> love it. A lot of rain. It was, man. Our practice facility is right there on the water, man. So the VMAC is very, very beautiful, man. So it was – my time in Seattle was my best time, man. And I and it reflected in my play and my personality. You know, I was able to kind of come back alive and, you know, really kind of re-enjoy football. So, you know, um, it, it was a great time, man. Yeah, man. And Kentuan, man, I appreciate this interview, man. I mean, it's always good to chop it up with a fellow Charger, man. Hey, look, before we end this interview, is there anything that you want to say to the listeners out there, especially the young athletes out there that that want to aspire to be great in the NFL, the NBA? I mean, just a few words. Um, I would definitely say to all the, the youth around the 252 area, you know, it's only impossible when you believe it is. I'm going to say that again. It's only impossible when you believe it is. You know, um, take the route less chosen. I mean, you know, less traveled. I'm sorry. Um, take the route less traveled. You know, it's going to be harder, you know, because it's going to be guys around the neighborhood doing things you wish you could do. You know, it's going to be guys hanging with girls that you wish you can get with. But, you know, you got to keep putting in that work. You got to keep putting in that work. And it'll pay off. You know, I'm a living testament to that. You know, um, but, you know, it's only impossible when you believe it is, you know. I, we, we've got about five guys now who, who's made it to the NFL. You know, you be the sixth. Positive, positive. And we're going to end that on a good note. All my listeners, God bless. Check me out. Spotify, iTunes, all media platforms. Appreciate you, Kentuan. No problem at all, man. And we out.